Aloha, welcome to the sanctuary. Merry Christmas. Today's message, Joy to the World. I'd like to speak about a different perspective we should consider about Christmas. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says, God chose things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. Isaiah 55, we all know, says that God weighs and thoughts are much higher than ours, but it will accomplish everything that he set it out to do. Think about the choices he made. Moses, Joseph, David, the prophets, the 12 disciples, Joseph and Mary, shepherds. He chose ordinary people just like you and me to do miraculous works in and through them. God's first announcement of the birth of Jesus came by shepherds. We tend to romanticize shepherds along with everyone else in the Christmas story. But we don't really understand who they were. Shepherds lived at the very bottom of the social ladder. The work they did was, they, nobody else wanted to do it. They were considered like throwaways, like Samaritans, invisible throwaway people. Those only less respected than the shepherds were those who suffered some kind of disease and nobody wanted to be around them. Yet God decided to announce Jesus' birth to a few shepherds. Think about that. In the field as they kept watch over their flock. He didn't choose the church or the powerful elite. This was God's choice from Jesus' birth to his death. He usually used, again, people, ordinary people like you and me. Let's listen to the birth of Christ through Luke 2, through 2, 6-14. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the village inn. That night, shepherds were in the field outside the village, guarding their flock of sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of God. Can you imagine you being there? They were badly frightened. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a, in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven. Praising God, glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang, and peace on earth for all those who please him. Isn't that wonderful? All heaven rejoices. The angels visit to the, uh, the, angels visit to the shepherd. This is where, you know, where, where Jesus lied. This was the first Christmas celebration on earth. Heaven and earth rejoiced and celebrated Jesus' birth together as one. God sent His only begotten Son, His greatest gift, His Savior of the world, just as He promised. During Christmas, we are familiar with many Christmas carols and songs, and uh, like Silent Night, O Holy Night, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and many other classics. We all have our favorites, and one of my favorites is Joy to the World. We just love to hear them. Joy to the World. Listen, listen to some of the lyrics. And... Uh, I think it will really, really get to your heart. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare room. Joy to the earth, the Savior reign. Repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Isn't that amazing? The main theme of Christmas is centered on the wonders of his love. 1 Corinthians 13 describes the wonders of his love. Here it goes. Love is patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own ways. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It never, it never glads about injustice. It rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love goes on forever. There are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, these is love. And Galatians 5 describes the attributes of God called okay, the fruit of the Spirit. Notice it's the fruit, not fruits of the Spirit. It's like an orange. One fruit with all different segments. 
The first segment is love, then joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. The scripture doesn't say God has love. God is love. This is who he is. God's love is a source of which the other attributes are interconnected. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? I love this. Matthew 22, 37, 39 says, Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God, Jesus. Love, love with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. And the second most important commandment is like this. Love your neighbor. Love others as you love yourself. You. J-O-Y. Jesus. Others. And you. The definition of joy. The emotion that invokes well-being of success or good fortune or by the prospect of processing what one, possessing what one desires. Let's talk about the first joy, Jesus. Jesus answered, love your, your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your mind. The first and very first commandment of the Ten Commandments says that there shall be no other God displaced before me. God first in every part of our life, not just some parts. Christmas is not only celebrating Jesus' birth 2,000 years ago, but most important, his presence today. Christmas is celebrating his entrance into humanity. He, we celebrate Easter over him sacrificing his life for our sins and the promise of his return to earth. Jesus is alive and will keep every promise that he made. As Christians, we have a fantastic future ahead of us. Our life on earth is just a brief moment, a blink of an eye, a whisper in comparison to eternity. It was God's plan to reunite himself with those he created and to get rid and to defeat sin in any way, shape, or form. All of that was separated now. Jesus came to bring us back together, to reunite us. Christians and non-Christians alike are very familiar with John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Think about that. God's love for us caused him to give his most precious gift, the joy of his life, Jesus, in exchange for our sins. And whoever accepts this Christmas gift would, not have, their, would have their sins forgiven, along with so many other blessings that follow. When we finally reach to the end of our brief time here on earth, there is a glorious dimension when we step over to the other side. But until we enter the joy of heaven, life's troubles here on earth can suck your joy. Can I hear an amen to that? Life can seem so joyless and not joyful. We, are, we all live in our own pressure cooker. Stress and worry and fear, uncertainty, loneliness seem to be our norm for so many people, especially during Christmas. Stress causes us to worry and is one of the major causes of many illnesses. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. The truth is, all we, need, we all need more joy, and some of us just need to have our joy restored. Love, joy, then peace. We all need peace of mind. When we have love and joy, peace comes with the package. When we have love, joy, and peace, we have Jesus in our life. We enjoy the simple things of life. We have more family time, more laughing time, more together time. We actually have face-to-face -face conversations. Today our lives are overly complicated and too demanding. We become too busy with becoming too busy. Life can be so demanding, so we put off enjoying each other and enjoy, no, put off what really enjoy doing. Some of us don't realize that our joy is leaking and needs some repairs before it's too late. We've fallen and we can't seem to get up. We all need to be refreshed and restored and renewed and be revitalized. Our passion needs restoration we want our joy tanks to be refilled so how can we do that Jesus said here's the answer come to me all who are tired from heavy burdens you have been forced to carry I will give you rest except my teaching learn from me I'm gentle and humble in spirit and you will be able to get some rest yes 
The teaching that I, that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you, okay, is light. Too many people are dragging around heavy burdens that's unnecessary and it's draining your joy. And God says, travel light. He wants us to refill our joy tanks and, and give us the rest that we so desperately need. Amen? The answer, Jesus. Oh, others, our neighbors. The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? People all around us. Our neighbors, our friends, okay? Uh, people we, we associate with, people that we work with. There's people all around. God loves people more than anything. That's why he sent Jesus. He loves us so much. He doesn't want our money. He doesn't want any, our stuff or anything else. Why? We cannot take anything okay, with us to heaven anyway. We got into the world with nothing and we leave with absolutely nothing. And the only thing we can bring to heaven with us are other people. This is why sharing the gospel is so important. God created us equally. We have no favorites. We all his favorites. There's no black sheep in the family. The Bible says people will judge or prejudge you by the way that you look on the outside, your label. It's the way we dress, where we live, where we eat, the clubs we, uh, uh, we are uh, members of, where we shop, our education, la, 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 la. <sighs> But we can be our worst, worst critic, can't we? I'm too tall. I'm too short. I own a business. I'm unemployed. I'm, I am well known. I am a nobody. I'm vaccinated. I'm not vaccinated. I drive a luxury car. I pray that my car starts this morning. <laughs> Whatever. Sadly, many tend to define themselves by the way what other people think about what they think about themselves. Kind of crazy. It can ruin you and make your life miserable rather than merry. God examines the condition of your heart, which is far more important than our physical appearance. Though we may look alike, uh, we may look and live differently. However, we're more alike on the inside. This is where God is more concerned about anyway. We laugh and cry in the same language. We dream and, and hope in the same language. We love, mourn, and celebrate in the, same, in, in the same language. By the way, if you close your eyes, you all look alike anyway, right? We become more like kids. We become less prejudiced and more accepting. We just want to get along and enjoy our living together as God planned. Don't we? That's exactly why God sent Jesus to restore his original plan. God so loved the world, his creation. His dream is for us to live in harmony, not his enemies. Harmony. Romans 12 says, don't just pretend to love others. Love each other in genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Do all that you can do to live in peace with everyone. What a wonderful scripture. We all need to live in a God-fearing, healthy community where everyone matters. We need each other. We need to love and be loved and to encourage, to be encouraged and, uh, and to give courage, to give and to receive, to serve and be served, to forgive and be forgiven. And we are much stronger when we live in harmony together. The last is the why, yourself. God makes no junk. This is how create, God created us. And we are defined by our creator. The Bible says we are his masterpieces and pre-planned to do work, good works. John 15, 13 says God has chosen us first and planned for us to be successful. God says you're a winner. Stop whining. We can do incredible things with him and nothing can separate us from, the, from his love. Absolutely nothing. Just think about it. God, the creator of everything in the universe, the king of kings, the lords of lords, almighty God is asking you and me, nobodies, okay, to accomplish his will on earth. What is his will? What is his top priority? 2 Peter 3, 9. It says, none shall perish. What is none? None. Oh. 
He wants everyone, just not some, to be saved. He wants every one of us to share the good news that Jesus came to earth to save us on Christmas. And he's alive and he is well and he is coming back for us. That's our passion. Jesus is the real, real reason for the season. He is the hope that we're looking for. For his greatest joy is for us to accept his Christmas gift of forgiveness and the guarantee of heaven. Christmas is about making a decision to accept God's joy gift, Jesus. But as a gift, a gift is not a gift unless we accept the gift. God's love gift is his gift of salvation, which includes forgiveness for our sins, giving us a brand new life and transforming a life to, to live according to higher standards. And on top of this, a promise of heaven when we leave earth. For Christians, leaving earth, you won't die. You live on in heaven. Amen? Forever. How can anyone not accept this gift? But God will not force you to accept it. Choosing to ask Jesus for forgiveness and allowing him to always to love us is always voluntary. He will continue to love you and me whether we accept the gift or not. But it's all up to you. Jesus never, never, ever gives up on you. Remember that. Some may be thinking, I heard this before, Pastor Nono. What if you're wrong? If I am and the Bible is wrong, then it's a short lifespan on earth. And after we die, nothing happens. We go into cyberspace somewhere. We'll just disappear or come back as a cockroach or a cow. But what if the Bible is true and you're wrong? What is your plan B? Are you willing to bet your forever on the opinions of others or your own personal opinion or something less than God's truth. I can relate to it because I was there over 20 years ago. What do you have to lose? Or maybe I should ask, what do you have to gain? Think about it. I'm not here to try to convince you or condemn you. But this truth remains the truth. People want real hope, not hype. We Christians are just ordinary, imperfect people living in an imperfect world who have decided to make a change in our life. We're not exempt from experiencing all the troubles in the world, but we have God's help to overcome them. We are convinced that Jesus loves us and we're headed in the right direction. We belong to him, with him and others who accepted the gift of salvation, the Christmas gift. Jesus wants to exchange gifts with you today, your sin for his salvation, your past for a better future, your fear, and your worry for his peace and joy. God will exchange your heart, transform your life, give you new hope, for better tomorrows, if you ask. You gotta ask. Christmas is all about removing your fear, uncertainty, loneliness, and replacing them with God's joy, peace, assurance, and presence. Christmas sadly has become so commercial rather than spiritual. Many are still mall crawling looking for sales. But Christmas is much less about the glitter or shopping of gifts under the tree. On Christmas morning, we'll unwrap the, the gifts that uh, we really wanted. And soon it's, it loses its joy, right? Now, the gifts that we really wanted was, is we stuff it away in your, you put away drawer in your closet or re-gift them <laughs> to give to somebody else. The newest version of the iPhone has become, what has more bling megapixels or smaller or faster, has longer battery life, will soon be replaced with an auto model in six months. But there's a gift that will always, always, always increase in value. His name is Jesus, and your gift is salvation. We have the same message as the shepherds did, and we too need to share this message, especially during the Christmas season when people are willing to listen. We all know people are hurting this Christmas. Some have lost their jobs. Some are sick. Some have loved ones who are sick, and some are very depressed. We need to tell people that there is hope. His name is Jesus. We need to tell people that our Savior has been born. We need to tell them that they don't have to be afraid. The reason for Christmas is in Christ and Christ alone. Christ has been born. He walked this earth. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And he offers the ultimate gift of eternal life to accept him as our Savior. I pray that this Christmas be one that you especially remember. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. He has come for you and me. 
If you haven't accepted Jesus in your life, please consider it. I know it would be the best Christmas gift if you ask Him and accept Him, not manana, today. Today can be the first day of the rest of your eternity. It's not complicated. All you have to do is ask and it will be given to you. If you want that gift, just pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask you to please forgive me for my sins. Today I receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord and my salvation. Thank you for loving me. Amen. The next step is find a good church so you can attend regularly and be a, a part of. You, everyone needs an ohana. The Spirit of Allah simply means Jesus loves you. Allah ke akua, God is love. Mele, mele, kalikimaka. We'll see you next time. Ahui ho and Merry Christmas.